And due to the absence of war, her life has also been affected by the incredible development of tourism. My best friend is Mulugetu. I go to school with her. I also have other friends like Waba, Melkam, and Nersane. But I spend most of my time with Mulu. She's in the fifth grade, like me. When there's school, we go together. And we are also together when they call us to water and work in the garden. In the afternoon, when school gets out, we skip rope. We play games, and we often go to sleep together. I told her that tomorrow I'm going to pick up my brother, and he's going to take me to visit my father's grave, just as he promised me. She's very happy for me. She knows how long I've dreamed of this trip. The Lalibela Market is held every Saturday. People come from all the valleys that surround the town. Contrary to what the stereotypes say, Ethiopia is not devastated by hunger. Its geography is exuberant and its lands are very rich. Ethiopia, among many other astonishing facts, is the African country where the most meat is eaten per inhabitant. The monastery where Yigeno lives is four hours from town. When King Lalibela finished his new Jerusalem with the help of the angels, he stepped down from the throne and dedicated the rest of his existence to a life of contemplation. However, his successors did not do the same, and rock after rock, tunnel after tunnel, new temples began to appear around the town, hidden from the eyes of the enemy of Christ. Just by looking at the precipitous and lush geography of the region, it was difficult to identify the many temples that were hidden underground and among the rocks. A complete liturgy of objects, books, and crosses, centered on the many churches and monks, appeared. Some are quite old, but have survived to today. On her journey, Mimi runs into two friends from school, who spend their free time selling reproductions of these objects to the tourists. Her friends walk with her for a short while, and then Mimi, on her own, continues the ascent towards the monastery where Yigeno lives. The first European to give a true account of this place was the Portuguese Francisco Álvarez. When he arrived at La Libela in 1524, he couldn't believe his eyes. Only contradictory facts existed about a city whose churches were built in the rocks, but nothing else. Alberis came with the intention of converting the Copts into followers of Rome, and he was truly moved by the strength of the Ethiopian religion. Neither Alberis nor any of the other Catholic missionaries who crossed Africa in search of the lands of the mythical Prester John were able to convince them to embrace the doctrines of the Catholic cross forever. It's not known for certain how these churches and temples were built or who constructed them. There are almost 200 of them scattered throughout northern Ethiopia. The people blend legend and history to the point of making it, like no other African area, a territory sustained by myth. Without myths, Without its ability to turn time into fables, Ethiopia would be just another country. This is not the first time that Mimi has gone to the monastery. She goes every two or three months to see her brother. The life of the Ethiopian monks shares some similarities with the Satus monks in India. 
They combine periods of retreat, and even the vote of silence, with others of openness, in which they make pilgrimages or accept a family visit. This time, Mimi walks up towards the monastery with the uncertainties of anyone starting a grand journey, a trip towards a re-encounter with the memory of her father. But they will not only go to their father's hometown. After visiting the cemetery, Yigeno wants to make a pilgrimage to different sacred places in northern Ethiopia, as well as to travel to Addis Abeba to participate in the Maskal festival. Mimi has never been to these places and is going to meet up with her brother with the assurance that she's about to begin a fascinating experience. Yigeno is already prepared to leave. Today, they will head for the north. This is a very important trip for me. First of all, because I promised this to Mimi, and also because it's the first time that I'm going to make a pilgrimage outside of the monastery as a monk. Years ago, when my father was alive, I went to Addis Abeba. He was returning from Djibouti, and I went with my mother to wait for him at the train station. I remember the long avenues, the buildings. Since then, I have dreamed about returning, but now I will be attending the great Mascal festival. But beforehand, I have to ask for the blessing and advice of the abbot of the monastery. Remember that there are two places that you have to visit. First, you must go to the Lake Tana monasteries. And in the second place is the Mascal festival. Pay close attention to how the tree burns. This burning tree represents the return of Christ. Don't forget to pay very close attention. To head towards their father's town, Mimi and Dijeno have to go down the steep, craggy rock upon which the monastery sits. It's a half-day's walk among rocks that have been molded by the hands of man for centuries. An immense work of traditional engineering based on stairs, twists and turns that give way to sacred caves. La Libela is a magnificent Swiss cheese made to suit the tastes of the saints. Ethiopia cannot be considered commonplace. Once we have tailored it to fit our thoughts, Ethiopia bursts through the seams of reason again. It's the only African country that was never colonized by a European army. The Italians tried for years, but had to give up. Ethiopian culture is original, very different from the rest of the African nations a culture more than 2,000 years old, but shaped based on exchanges, on contact with Europe and the Orient for centuries. A solid reality, a defined personality as the sum of the world, cultural blending as an example of survival. My father supported me when I said that I wanted to become a monk. He didn't like the war, but our grandfather was a soldier, and force my father to join the military. He didn't want the same thing to happen to me, for me to have to go places that I didn't like. I remember the day that I told him about my dream. I thought that he was going to get angry, but he started to laugh. First, he asked me if I was sure. Then he went to get his flute, and he began to play. I cannot remember that day without the flute. When he came back from the war, he never talked about the deaths. He only sang songs and he always appeared with a new one. Listening to him, I could never imagine that war could be so terrible. I never imagined that one day he would stop playing and that I would never see him again. <laughs> 